Hey everybody from Windy Acre Bees out in Western Massachusetts. Um, boy, we had a really <coughs> brutal couple days the other day uh, and yesterday. 40 below, zero wind chill, and uh, 14 to 18 below, zero, just the regular temperature itself. So it feels like summertime here today at 40 degrees. And um, so what I'm doing here is um, there's always, you know, something to do as far as beekeeping. Um, you know, take the month of December off, but uh, making swarm traps is the thing that I'm starting to do today. Um, I already have some that I made that I use every year, but I'm making a couple extras, uh, not only for myself, but I do sell these also. So, um, you know, if you're interested, um, I can sell them and uh, already pre-made and have them shipped. Uh, it's a little pricey though with the shipping. So a lot of uh, these I sell to local people. But uh, anyways, this uh, box here was designed uh, dimensions wise by Thomas Healy uh, in his book, Honey Bee Democracy. Um, by all means, go ahead and grab it online and uh, get yourself a copy and read it. Uh, it's a fascinating book, it explains um, everything about um, the tendencies of swarming for uh, honeybees and uh, swarm traps. And this box that uh, he came up with the dimensions for it <coughs> are basically, <coughs> excuse me, are basically um, dimensions that he found that is the average size cavity that a uh, honeybee forager will find for its colony that is or has swarmed already. And um, so that that's pretty much it. Now you can use a Langstroth box with the um, putting a, a solid bottom on it, drilling a hole in the side of it, and uh, putting a vent on the top, and then putting your cover on top, and you can hang that for a tree. Um, or you know or a stand or wherever I just find them more cumbersome uh, bigger box does not necessarily mean a bigger uh, swarm of bees um, you'll be amazed at how many bees will actually cram into this this box here it's a 40 liter box so um, they have uh, plenty of room and that's the whole idea behind this is to give them plenty of room but not give them too much room um, the bees will reject it if it's just too big and um, they'll reject it if it's too small so this is kind of the average size um, so I am putting these together right here, but um, I wanted to give you some of the dimensions. So I'm just gonna set this aside for a minute. I just started on this one here. So I'll go over some steps here as to what you can do to uh, to make one of these. Um, one of my bases, I gotta find it here. I'll give you the dimensions. Uh, we'll start with our sides here first. Um, this is the sides. Um, I use it out of uh, half inch plywood. Um, this is sanded plywood. Believe it or not, the sanded plywood and a lot of the birch, half inch birch, is a lot less expensive than your standard um, your standard plywood that they use for building. Um, in, in our area, the sanded plywood is almost $20 per 4x8 sheet less than standard plywood that's not sanded, go figure. Um, has a tighter grain to it, uh, weather, so that's good weather wise, and um, has a tighter, a tighter uh, glue. Um, pattern here on the inside where they glue the sheets together so this is a, um, a side which is right here and this right here measures 18 wide by 20 okay so that's 18 inches by 20 inches you're gonna need two of those and then you're gonna need a base which is right here which is on the bottom which is where everything is going to attach to this one here is also 20 inches but width wise it's about nine and an eighth, nine and an eighth inches. So that is going to be your base that everything is going to set on. You're only going to need one of those. And then you have your sides, which are right here. Or I should say sides, but your front and your back. And uh, what I do is I make a whole bunch of these and just set them aside. And I just label them, you know, front, back. Uh, I put F and B on there and then uh, B for base and S for side on the other one. But um, you'll need two of these. And these are going to be just a little bit smaller because they are the front and the back. So this one here is 18 long by 8 and an eighth wide. And I'm just going to double check the other one, make sure I don't have any miscuts here. Yep, 8 and 8 and 18. So you're going to need two of those, 8 and an eighth and um, 18 inches. Um, don't be overly concerned if you miscut something on the side a little bit. Um, this is basically a rough cut swarm trap it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect so you know if your measurements are off by a 16th or an eighth, an eighth of an inch really don't be too overly concerned about it as long as we get a square box um, the gaps that are in there you can either fill in with wood glue if it's really bad um, or you can use wood putty or you can just leave it alone um, you know out in the wild trees and 
houses aren't perfect anyway, so the bees aren't going to mind. So those are our main components, and then we'll go over some other components a little later, like your um, your rests that are inside for the frames. Um, I also put a couple two skis on the bottom, and the reason for that is is so when you set it down, you're not setting it flat on the base. It's raised up about a half an inch, and we're going to have a ventilation hole underneath that, so um, the air can get in underneath that. And then if you set it up on a center block somewhere, once you take it out of the tree, it's, again, it's not resting flat, um, or if you put it on the ground, it's resting on the skis. So. Um, Th that will explain those in the ventilation afterwards. So basically what I've done is um, I take the base and wood glue right here, use wood glue. Uh, if you use the tie bond too um, and um, it's a premium grade wood glue, it does set up really quick uh, so don't waste any time. Um, if you want to waste a little time then just use your standard Elmer's um, wood glue. I use a crown stapler. I use these with uh, inch and a quarter, inch and a half staples inside just because they hold better. You can use a brad gun is perfectly fine and um, and that's pretty much it. So what I do is glue everything. Everything that's going to be touching another piece of wood, glue it. That's where your bond is going to be. So on our base, I'll run a strip of glue here on the very edge on both sides of the base right there and then I will take this and actually put this up here like this and to balance it and help balance it I'll take both of these sides I'll take two of them and I'll set them up like this so one rests on the other side while you're working on the first side just like that I'll line it up nice and then I will put a whole bunch of staples probably at least six staples here and then staples on the other side and then I'll have the sides and the base put together just like that. So we're going to leave this here out of the way for now. And then once I get done with that part, we take our um, front and backs, which are right here, and we'll put that and we'll set every... Now everything sets on the base. It doesn't set to the side of the base because you want your weight setting on the wood. You don't want it setting off the sides of the wood. So this will actually go down in between the two sides and it'll rest right on the base. I'm going to put wood glue, wood glue on both sides here. Anywhere the wood's going to be touching each other, put the wood glue there. And so that's where I'm at with this particular piece right now. I have just put wood glue on here. Turn it over so you guys can see it a little bit. I'll line everything else as flush as I can get it. Right there and there. Hold it up real tight and then take my crown stapler and I'll do um, one on the top and I'll do one here in the middle, one on the bottom just to get it set and then I'll go do the same thing on the other side just like that. And then I'll follow through with one in between those on both sides. Just like that. And then after that, I usually take a sip of coffee so I can check out my fine work. God, I love that Dunkin' Donuts. And sometimes if you've got like a low battery or something in your, in your gun, um, your staples won't go in all the way and that's fine. I just take a hammer, punch them in the rest of the way, and I go around make sure all those staples are in there good for two reasons. We want a good bond and we don't want to catch our fingers while we're hanging this up in a tree either. And when you get all done with this, uh, what I usually do is I'll take a, uh, a small butane port, uh, torch that they use for um, you know for plumbing and that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll actually burn a little bit of the insides of this wood here. It takes that fresh wood scent away. Um, the bees, believe it or not, they'll be a little deterred if um, they fly in here. The foragers are checking this thing out, and um, it has that very strong uh, pine aroma to it. You know, so. Um, we end up doing is um, I'll burn it. It takes a lot of that away, and uh, it kind of cures the wood on the inside. And then after that, I'll um, melt down some uh, some propolis and uh, old comb together uh, into a 
you know, a, a, a little pan or something, and then take a brush and put a couple brush strokes on there, and then um, leave one or two pieces of maybe old comb or propolis in the bottom of it before I set it out. That's a whole nother uh, baiting, uh, how to bait these and set these up. I did do a, um, I did do a uh, segment on, um, you know, how to bait these, how to set them up, where to set them up. Um, I did it last year. I'll do another one here pretty soon, but we got about two months before we have to put these up. So I'll, uh, if you want to go back into about, you know, June of last year through my videos, you'll find that video on how to set them up. And uh, if you paint these, paint these with an outdoor acrylic paint. And um, I usually paint them, you know, uh, a tan, a brown, greenish, almost like a camo type of pattern or just a solid green or solid brown. Um, if you do green, do something kind of in a um, darker green color. It blends into the woods real good with a foliage. Um, and that'll protect the box and um, you know you stick this out in the middle of the woods it's going to be like a bright light and um, I'd rather just have people not see it and not mess with it but uh, so that's it so that's the basis of our box if you look inside that's it there and what I'm going to do is just pause for a minute and we're going to go uh, take a look at uh, some other pieces of wood here that I'm going to make sure I have and show you what their functions are for for the storm trap so uh, we'll be back in, back in a second here. Okay, so what we have is um, just a couple of pieces of woods that we use on the inside of the box here for your hangers um, so that you can hang your frames on the inside of the box. These are, um, they're cut to length so they fit right on the inside of the box right here, as you can see right here. And they're kind of thin. They're probably about uh, probably a quarter of an inch, I would say. You don't need them really any um, thicker than that so this is yeah this is just over a quarter of an inch and uh, because the inner dimension of the box right here is eight inches we don't want to cut them any more than eight inches a piece right here okay so we have two of these right here and they're all going to both of these are going to go on the inside of the box and they're going to go about a half inch down on the inside of the box I don't know if you can see that very good but right here when you put them in they want to go about half an inch down from the top and that is so when your frame if you look at your frame the top of your top bar of your frame right here it's about a half inch thick so you want that kind of resting inside you don't want to put it flush and have it sitting on the outside you want to have that frame sitting on the inside just a little bit like that and your hanger will sit on it so change out your um, your staples from the inch and quarter or inch and a half that you have and I'm using half inch staples for this and I'm just going to take a quick measure now I eyeball this because I've done enough of them but if you're doing this for the first time just measure down a half inch get my pen going here a half inch from the top of the edge of the box so that's going to be right about there. And like I said, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but we're going to go half inch down there. And that is where the top part of your shim or your hanger right here, that is where that is going to meet the, bot the bottom of that mark. So I'll put these in and then I'll show you what it looks like. Get them kind of straight so that your frames are not crooked once you put them in. And um, I only use like three staplers. Um, this is not a permanent box that you're going to permanently keep bees in. Where did my other hair it is? Um, and this stuff here is basically um, I had some one by two here and I can rip them right down the middle and so if you see two of these would equal the width of that so I rip it down the middle um, these are old pieces so this one here is an old piece of um, some quarter inch luon that I had scraps left over so you know when you're cutting your cutting your half inch pieces and everything and you have I've got a whole box full of these here and um, I just cut them down to eight inches I'll have to cut that one off and save all your scrap wood because it's just about every piece of your scrap is going to be used for these traps eventually. So this one here, half inch down from the top. I'm going to put that on there like that. One, two, 
And please keep your fingers out of the other way. I don't know how many times I had to learn that lesson myself. But now your frame can sit in there just, just like that. And you're going to have room for five frames on the inside by the dimensions. So if you have eight inches in between here and you have the right dimension on the inside, which is going to be about 19 something, 19, 19 inches exactly actually, that uh, is going to give you plenty of room to put your frames in, just like that. So that's it so far. Now we're going to um, attach the skis onto this and I'm going to grab those pieces of wood and come right back. So we're going to put the skis on the bottom and the reason why I do this is I don't want this sitting flat and the reason is is because I'm going to put a vent in the very base and the very bottom of this box here and um, I want to have that ventilation underneath. Um, when it's warming up outside in the springtime and the bees are checking this out, um, one of the things is when you bait this, if you don't have that vent, that bait is going to be even stronger. Um, we want that air circulation in here for these bees and um, they really uh, they really gravitate towards something like that um, over a hole in a tree somewhere. So we're going to do that. Uh, the other reason is, is if you're using this long term, from, um, you can use it for a variety of um, uses. Um, you can use it for just nooks, um, mating nooks, and um, as well as swarm traps. Um, if you have uh, uh, one of the things that I do is if I get a new package of bees um, in early, uh, the end of, end of March, it's still cold here, so I don't like to dump them into a 10 frame lane, 10 frame lane straw. Um, I like to put them in here with some drawn comb and some food in here and that'll give them a smaller area to keep warm in instead of a giant box um, a bunch of empty frames on the outer edges where it's hard for them to keep warm so uh, a lot of different reasons but um, that's what I use the skis for is if I'm going to be using this for a little bit of time also um, it's, uh, it's good to have them up off the ground and uh, let that uh, ventilation um, keep the very bottom of the box from getting wet and damp and moldy and rotting on you so um, so that's what we're going to do now. So to make the skis, you don't want them, these I think are 15 inches. You want them between 15 and 20 inches long. These are 16 inches. And you don't want them any shorter because then your box will be weevil wobbly when it's sitting on the ground. It'll, um, it, it could tip over easier. So I'll use these for the bottom and they're going to go right here, right up to the very edge, right here. And we'll do the same on the other side. We'll put another one down here as well. And um, there's about an inch and a half off of each end. I do like to use skis that are full length of the bottom of this just for sturdiness. Um, but again, using scrap wood that I have that I have no other purpose for. And that's what I want to use these for right here. So we'll put this over up on top. And this one here, I'm going to need some longer staples for so let me grab those um, I think I'm gonna have to use probably inch and a quarter for this I think that's just the right size for these yeah perfect so inch and a quarter so the staples you use are half inch inch and a quarter and inch and a half the inch and a quarter can actually be used for the putting the main frame of the box together too, they'll be long enough. So I'm um, just going to slap a little bit of glue on here. Don't need a whole lot, but just some to hold it pretty close and pretty sturdy without falling apart. And we're going to put that and we're going to make them even with each other as far as front to back. and. Two, two there, two there, again don't have to make these perfect if your staples are a little long and they come through the inside of the box, we'll check here, just barely broke the wood so those are the right size, but if they came through just reach inside with a pair of snips, cut the staples off and uh, you'll be fine. So those are the skis. So now, as you can see here, there is a gap here in between these 
two skis right here, just like that. And we're going to put our vent hole right here in the middle. And we're actually going to tackle that now, and we'll get our holes drilled um, for the front and for our discs, and um, also a vent in the back of the box. So we're going to get those saw blades, and we're going to get them ready to go. Okay, so um, there's a couple different types of vents that you can use, and I don't like using these. I, I used a lot of these initially at first. Um, they're just little soffit vents right here that you can use. There's another one here. And the reason why I don't like using these anymore is just for cost. Um, we just need a little bit of ventilation just to move air in and out. That's all we need. So um, these here are like $1.79 probably when I got these are $1.79 to probably even a couple cents more probably almost two dollars a piece now whereas if you get a regular um, nine inch long by five inch wide regular so flat soffit vent um, you can uh, you can buy that for the same cost as just one of these and you can get like five or six of those um, if you just cut them they come about that long and um, you can just cut them in sections and you can just use, staple them over your vent holes and uh, those work great so it's a lot cheaper so you know experience for yourself you can also use hardware cloth you can use just regular quarter inch hard hardware cloth um, for vents um, the bees like a dark space on the inside so um, I find that the hardware cloth allows maybe a little bit too much more light in the inside of the box uh, than normally they would have so uh, these here are, work great so um, Find uh, if you are using these here, just find your hole saw that fits the right diameter of this. I think this is like a two or two and a quarter diameter. And I'll show you where we're going to put these vents. You're going to want to put one in the back, and as I explained earlier, one in the bottom. So we will tip this over here, upside down, and I just put it kind of right in the center, right here, just like this. on them so top so we can pick these up so um, we're going to put those handles down here a little ways and remember that your top cover is going to come down about an inch and a half to two inches over the top of this box so we have to put uh, our hole in between the bottom of where our cover is going to fall and then above where our hand top of our handle is going to be and uh, let's see again more scrap wood this is all you need for a handle so if you figure you're going to be screwing this down to the top and your lid's going to come down to here about two inches so we're going to fall right in between there for the back vent Take my 
crown saver and put those half inch I'm doing good here today. Put those half inch crowns and back in. And staple maybe two or three staples on that one. We're going to do that for the bottom. The louvers don't matter in the bottom which way they go because the rain is not going to roll over them. One there. That's good. And now we have ventilation for a swarm trap. Now again, like I said, a piece of hardware cloth over that hole is fine. Um, you don't have to go any more than like an inch and a quarter, inch and a half hole uh, in, in here. It's just to move air around, that's all. And then you can see on the bottom, we have that on the bottom. So now we know that where that vent is, is going to be the back of your trap. Now we want to put a entrance hole in the front and you can drill one hole. Um, I like to do two because it just helps with their coming and going. When a swarm is moving into this trap, they're trying to cram in, you know, thousands of bees all at one time and then they're full of energy and they're buzzing in and out. Uh, the foragers are going out right away and looking for food. Um, the queen has moved in and the foragers are just trying to get in and out as fast as they can. So what I do is put uh, a hole here in the front and I'll put two of them actually. Um, it doesn't matter really if you put it in the corners or in the middle, the hole in the middle, or if you put it up here just a little bit. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as it's in the front within the bottom two inches of the trap. Um, I just put them in the corners. smaller small birds or mice um, or anything else from going in there to deter them from going in there so I'll show you how I'm going to do that in just a second so I just take a couple finished nails and um, you know if you have better ways to do this by all means all we want to do is just block those ho that hole up just enough to deter any birds from getting in and trying to build a nest inside because when we're putting this up at that time of year that's the time that birds are listening, looking for nesting locations just as well as bees are looking to swarm. So um, I have a couple inch and three quarter um, finish nails. I just have a, had an old box of them, so I'm just trying to use them up. I don't have any purpose for, for them right now. And what I'm going to do is just place this up on end. And I'm going to nail the finish nail into the top of the hole just like that and I nail it in far enough that it's going to hold and then that will 
be all you need to do. here that are going to block these holes up. The bees can get in and out, but nothing else can get in there except those. Um, what I'll probably do is just tap them in just a little bit more. Take a screwdriver here. size works about right because it fits the whole hole here and you'll, you'll put a screw through here and you'll put the screw in there just tight enough so that this disc can turn around in circles and um, we'll do that a little later and that'll hold it right there so we'll be able to close it off and still keep ventilation so that when we move the uh, transport the box around our bees don't take off on us so um, we're going to uh, make another couple cuts because I don't have any here. So I'm going to make another couple cuts for the top, show you how to make the top on this here. And um, you're going to be pretty well close to done at that point. So we'll be back in a little bit. So we want to make our top for this here. And the best thing I can say to do is to measure your dimensions here. We've got nine and a half wide and 20 inches. So um, you want to make your frame for your top, make your tops a little bit wider so they kind of like hang over the edge of your box front and back because that's the space you're going to fill in with your frame. So for these, um, 10, 10 and a half wide and by about 21 and a half, uh, long. So, um, some of mine covers fit on really tight just because of my measurements and um, I kind of I kind of like that because it, it makes it harder for anything to pop these lids off even though we're going to bungee them um, anyways but uh, the the top here is going to be those dimensions and like I said you want it to hang over a little bit uh, I just use regular um, Luan here it's like wall paneling right here I just use these they're lightweight uh, it's cheap and we you know we're, we're all about making these as you know as least expensive as possible um, for the framing I just use furring strip it's one by three uh, furring strip and I cut that down just because these are very very inexpensive uh, the buy is eight footers um, you can be fancy if you want and you can go just a regular one by three finished pine but it's going to cost you more per foot so um, these are actually going to line up here with this uh, again I do like to put some glue on these just for fastening reasons so uh, I'll put a little bit of glue here on the inside just like that and I like to um, use the half inch you don't have to uh, I don't really have a very thick roof to go through so let's just make sure this is half inch um, yes they are so so we'll put that in there like that and I'll just hang this over a little bit make sure front and the back is pretty square just like that and like I said you don't have to be fussy with these things I know some of us are perfectionists and some things I do I am other things like these here they're going to be out in the weather they're going to be used and abused so I'm not really overly concerned about that. So now I'm going to do the other side as well before I run a bunch of finished staples in there. So we'll uh, put some more wood glue right here on the side. 
If you notice in my other videos, I wear the same shirt this time of year. My Yellowstone shirt, because I love the show. But it's one of my favorite shirts. It just happens to be funny that I wear it when I do a video. So we'll staple this. Just like that. And I will do that to check for the fit. And it looks like it's going to fit good. And then I'll run a bunch more staples. To hold the lid down. Now I'll show you what we can do with this lid afterwards, which is what I usually do. Um, I'm not going to go into exactly how to do it. I'll explain it. That'll be good enough. But let's put the end pieces on here of our lid. There's one and two. We're going to press this down in between there. I hope you guys are, can see this okay. Just like that. Put our other piece on right here. I have a funny feeling front to back this is going to fit really tight just by the way I'm looking at it, but that's okay. If it fits loose, that's perfectly fine too. So we'll flip this over. Now you don't have to use this type of lid. You can use um, like a migratory cover type lid, which is basically the top and just the sides here and not these edges here. It's just that they, they flex too much, so I like to make the full frame for it. And then our lid is going to fit on our trap just like that. So now that we know that that's going to fit pretty snug, what I'll do is swap out my staples for my inch and a quarter or one inch inch and a quarter and what I'll do is I'll go right here right here on the side and tying the frames together don't have to use a whole lot of staples to do a lot of this stuff that glue will hold everything up good so now I have a very nice tight fitting lid on here and that's it for your lid. Now what I like to do is um, you can paint this up on top and if you do and you're not going to put any type of um, weather shield over the top of this, paint this really really good. Actually put at least two if not three coats of that outdoor paint on here so that the water doesn't soak through and rot your lid right away. What I do is I take, um, you can go down to Home Depot or anywhere, uh, your local hardware store and you can buy a roll of aluminum that uh, is, you know, is about this wide and cut it to length, bend the corners of the aluminum over, and then we can um, then we can staple that aluminum cover over the top of this. Um, you could use plastic too, uh, you know, um, that's a cheap way out of it too. Just put plastic over the type of this and then staple the plastic on the edges. That way you protect this cover. But that is our lid. So we would put our five frames in here like this, all the way across. And then we will put our cover on and even though this even though this cover fits tight which is the way I like it for these I like to put um, a uh, two eyelets on each side or use one big bungee cord and just put the bungee cord over to the over to the top um, just to hold this down but that's why I like to hold these uh, make these as snug as possible so if I don't have a bungee cord at the time I don't really have to worry about it so that is our trap basically in its completion um, we got the two vents we got the sides the hangers on the inside um, we can run all of our frames in here put our lid on and then go about baiting them and selecting a place that we're going to want to put them and um, I'll show you what I was talking about as far as burning the inside it's not very hard uh, what I like to do is just take one of uh, my propane cylinders and we'll put this on here this is probably a good time to do this just take a little burner it just looks just like this here 
And um, all I do is just reach inside, and I just burn. It's a lot easier to do it this way to show you. But um, what I do is just um, just burn a little bit of the wood on the inside. And what it does is it masks that new pine smell. But so does the wax and the propolis. So that's what I like to do with that. And like I said, it just um, it burns the impurities off the wood on the inside. It only takes you about two minutes to do it real quick. And then when you smell the inside of it, um, it basically takes that new wood smell away so it won't deter your bees. Put our frame in here. This. Cover on, just like that, and now we have a swarm trap. So you're probably saying, well, okay, now how do I hang this thing? Well, I'm investigating two things. Um, what I used to do was, um, let me see here, one by three. Yeah, right here. So I take this piece of wood right here. This is a one by three. It's finished pine. And what I was doing in the past, and I'm going to try something new this year, is uh, a lot of people for sturdiness, um, they will take a piece that sticks up about 10 inches above the trap, drill a hole right in here, at least a probably three quarter inch hole in the middle of this, and then attach this piece of wood here to the side of your box right here. So I would, th this would ultimately be down here like this. I would drill a hole here and here and put bolts through there, carriage bolts. Um, so that the um, the flat head of the carriage bolt is on the inside sticking out and uh, drill two holes here and then I put a shim in between the two like that because the lid the, the, this hanger has to be out past the lid so your lid comes off and in any case this would be fastened to the side of the box and I can take them off for storage and I drill a hole here and I would use this to hang that up on a tree uh, on a spike. Now the other thing that I'm contemplating doing that might be a little easier is actually uh, because we hang this um, on, a, on a tree branch or a tree or, or uh, even the side of a barn or something like that is actually to drill um, little tiny holes right here and on the back right below our um, vent and placing um, eyelets there on both sides and then just using cable tied to those eyelets. Um, it may take a little bit more work than I really want to get into but then we can just like a picture frame you're hanging up on a wall when you hang up a picture frame uh, with a wire on the back of that picture frame we can hang this up. The hangers are just to hold the trap in place on a tree um, or wherever you're hanging it uh, so that you can get a strap all the way around it, a, a, um, a buckle strap. The buckle strap is what actually holds this to the tree, not the hanger. The hanger is just to free up two hands so you can put the strap around. So that's that. So um, we have one other thing that we're going to do, and we're going to put our handles on next. And that's really very simple. So we have our vent in the back. Let's see what we want to use for handles. Again, leftover wood, scrap wood. These pieces, I want to get pieces that are kind of almost the same same length. They don't have to be perfect. But um, yeah, I guess we can use these. So uh, again, just a couple pieces of scrap wood, and you know they're gonna be the width of your trap. And what I like to do is put them equal. So I'm actually gonna start with the back to where the vent is, because we're gonna put this just below the vent. So that one would go there like that, change out my blade so I have to. Um, yeah, probably. So we'll put these long staples in. This is going to go about a third of the way down. Like that. Don't need wood glue on the back of those, not a big deal. And then I got this piece here, about a third of the way down. Kind of like that. And now, when you want to pick this up, you have, right here, you have something to grab onto. 
on both sides. And if you can see what I meant, where your cover comes down a couple inches above the top of your um, the top of your box, and then yet this vent has got to be above this handle here. So your positioning of where your vent is going to be kind of crucial right there. But now I can just pick this up with both hands. I can carry it around wherever you want. It's nice to have those handles, especially when this box is all put together. It probably lay weighs 10 pounds, um, maybe a little less. But when this is full of bees, it could be you know 20 to 30 pounds inside of here. So that, my friends, is how you would make a swarm trap, a 40 liter swarm trap. Uh, you can see with the skis here, things aren't wobbly front to back at all. Like, you know, this isn't this isn't going to tip over on you, and it's not going to tip over this way. The skis hold it up pretty good, and uh, that's all you need for a swarm trap. So it's taken me probably a total with cutting all the pieces of measuring and cutting all the pieces of wood. Now, when I cut the wood, I cut cut them in bulk um, so that I make you know whole a whole bunch of templates all together and a whole bunch of pieces all together. So um, if I had to just cut um, just the pieces of wood for this trap alone, it would probably, until from start to finish to where the point I am right now, this would probably take me about 45 minutes to an hour's time all total. Um, understandably, when you do your first one, it's going to take you a little longer, but after you do one, um, and especially if you have pre-cut pieces already, you're going to be able to zip these together pretty good. Um, it's probably going to take you maybe an extra 10 minutes to put your covering over the top here and then your time that you're going to want to paint with uh, to paint this. So uh, I hope that gives you, I, you know, I, I know I ran through this quick. Um, I don't edit many of my videos. I just kind of do them the way I, the way I got to do them and um, let you see the mistakes I make so that you don't feel funny when you make mistakes, uh, the same mistakes. And uh, that's it. Um, it's not perfect uh, as far as, you know, is this handle the exact, you know, same place as this handle here. They're pretty close. Um, so those are the kinds of things that I mean. I hope this helped you out a little bit, um, especially if you're up here up north and you still got some time yet like I do before uh, we get our bees buzzing pretty good. Um, make a few of these and uh, follow my videos as far as how, where to set these up, how to set them up, how to bait them. And, um, you know, it's not a guarantee to catch honeybees. I never say it is. Um, no one ever did say it is. But if you do have honeybees in the area that you put this swarm trap out and they're inclined to swarm, um, this is going to be their go-to place uh, if they find it. So, um, you know, uh, it's a lot of fun catching them. Um, you know, once you catch them and, and you go out a few days later and you go take the box down and, you know, you lift this lid up at 8 o'clock at night when it's dark real carefully and look inside, um, it, it's just it's just amazing, um, you know, what you'll see. And, and you'll be real proud of yourself as far as uh, what you caught. And, hey, free bees are free bees. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this right here. If you have guys have any other questions or whatever, uh, if I think of it, I'll put the dimensions of these pieces um, on uh, in the description part of this video, and you can jot them down. Um, if you're uh, if if I forget or you can't quite understand the dimensions at all, um, just put a comment in the comment section and uh, ask me, and um, I can always email you uh, the plans for this that I have drawn up. Uh, or the dimensions and uh, and you'll have them so um, thanks for watching everybody and we're going to do some more videos here soon we got a lot of frames to get built um, a lot of boxes to get cleaned up here we only have uh, let's see it's mid no, it's not even mid February yet it's probably like the 5th or 6th of February right now so um, our warmer weather uh, it's been a very warm we weather um, season for us this winter and we're hoping that's going to carry into spring but here in New England um, 50 degrees today uh, 10 degrees tomorrow so we never know um, but we're going to be putting these up here pretty soon so uh, I'm kind of excited about it if uh, again if you have any questions hit me up and um, in the comment section and I'll answer them as best I can and that's it if you guys have any other uh, better ideas on how you guys would like you know to do this or you know um, you know better design or something like that throw that up for other people too um, put links to them but this is how we do them and they work very very well here all right, everybody, have a good rest of your day, and we'll talk to you soon.